and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later over there for some more Mono Red Crisis. We had a lot of success the last time we played this in Ranked, and I'm really close to Mythic right now. And so I wanted to play a couple of decks that I like quite a bit and that we've had a lot of success with and see maybe if we get to uh, that Mythic um, spot here today. Uh, so we have Monterey Crisis and Bant Arcbow. I'll be playing both of those here in Ranked, seeing if we get there. So this is the same deck that we played about a week ago now. Um, last week we went 4-1 with it in Ranked, and I remember like the loss that we had was because of us not being able to hit land drops. Uh, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Basically what we have here is we have our mono red mid-range deck uh, that's splashing, of course, for Hydra Crisis for our top end, because this card is just incredible um, at the top end. And just Goblin Chain Whirler is just such a strong card these days. So just having Goblin Chain Whirler here. We even have Direfully Daredevil with some more first strike. When we have first strike creatures, we can back them up with removal. Uh, that's damage base makes them really hard to block. We got some aerial attack in here as well, and some immortal suns to shut down all these planeswalkers that everybody else is playing. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a pretty solid strategy. Uh, you know, I've I've been really liking this deck. So let's go ahead and try it out some more here. So how close are we? So we are uh, one two. So I guess we we're five wins away from mythic. But of course, every loss brings us back. So we'd have to win five more than we lose, which that's going to be pretty tough in two decks. Like if we go, I guess if we go four one four one, where's Chandra? There's Chandra. Did you want to play with fire, huh? Yep, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go play with fire. But that's that's pretty difficult because you know usually with like with these ranked decks, like honestly, like I'm happy with three twoing all the time because three two is still winning sixty percent. And these matches are pretty tough. Yeah, Star of Extinction can be MVP also. Uh, definitely won a game because of the Star of Extinction last time. Hey, Radical Guru. <laughs> this deck isn't as explosive as Chandra. I don't know. Star of Extinction is pretty explosive. But yeah, maybe it's a Jaya Ballard deck. Give it a try. Yeah, I don't mind that there's three Chandras in Corset 2020. I don't. I don't really mind that. Um, yeah, they look pretty good, especially like both the rare and the mythic look pretty strong. Uh, expect. I'm expecting both of those uh, to see play. Can I wait? I shouldn't wait. I was thinking if I could wait to Chain Whirler that, but I shouldn't. Ooh. All right, so they're definitely trying to light up the stage. Uh, Tissar Tissarus? Let's see. Cyrus? Tiss Cyrus, maybe. I bet, Cyrus. Thanks for that support. I really appreciate that. Thanks for that sub there. Yeah, so they're trying to light up some stages. Yeah, Cyrus. Cool. Got it. The, the sad thing is I think I let them. I don't think I just used the coil here, unfortunately. I just don't... I don't have very many resources right now and especially one of these is not the card that we want against mono red so we're kind of looking at these two and i just don't think i can afford to to use that there all right so i did get at least my opponent was scared of shock and everything and uh just fired that off to make sure that they got to light up the stage respect that dr random with that resub as well Thanks, Dr. Random. All right, so what do we have over here? Frenzy, Steamkin, Lightning Strike. 
So if I play Chain Whirler, they can just Lightning Strike it. I want them just to be able to... I want them just to play Steamkin and nothing else. But, dang, they drew that land. I was really hoping they didn't draw a land. Um... Let's let's give it a try. Dang, unfortunate. Oh well, good news they're down to four cards. That's the good news. Nope, the greed didn't pay off. not going to be greedy here and try to lightning strike or or you know like daredevil strike it and then you know they just play like another shock and they have a 4-4 like light up the stage would be could be pretty nice here to be honest hmm Hmm. Well, my safest play of not taking damage is going like, or just going sh strike, strike, or daredevil shock. Just do this. We'll wait a turn. Chandra's going to be really good. Now Chandra's going to be difficult. That takes up to five immediately, right? Yeah. So if I, if I kill the Chandra, I'm down to six. And this thing's going to ultimate in three turns. So uh, let's see, 15 and then 7. Time to fight fire with fire. I mean, as much as I would ra not, as much as I don't want to attack Chandra, I really think it's the best move to get to attack Chandra there. As much as I hate attacking Chandra, because if they just, if they just like have. 
but they just are able to find removal for like the phoenix we can't kill in time and then they um get to like ultimate the chandra or we have to like stop that like it, it just gets really messy Quasi Dupla Ooze is a deck just built around Biogenic Ooze and Quasi Duplicate, just copying Biogenic Ooze as much as possible. So the one move that really, really hurt me in that game was not lightning striking that, that Steamkin right away. You know, I tried to go for the Chain Whirler there. Um, and, of course, them drawing that, that land to be able to shock with the, with the Steamkin. That really hurt as well. Get that thing out of here. Hey, thank you so much, Badonkadonk. Thanks for that resub there. And he starts streaming earlier. <laughs> well, that's that's what the YouTube videos are for. Unless you're able to watch um, watch like the whole stream. Um, like Cannonade is is definitely reasonable. I got some of these treasure maps down. Get those cannonades in here. Treasure map's just really slow. Yeah, maybe I should take out. Honestly, I should probably. Maybe I should take out that other treasure map for the Bane Fire. All right, Krasis, I need you to do some work for me. Please, no Steamkin. Yay. Like what does a crisis do right now? Not just not very much. Hey, G Seth.
We'll see if we actually take more damage by not killing the Steamkin. Dr. Ultra, what's up? Too many Steamkins. Hmm. That's annoying. So I play a Krasis now, then they get to Daredevil, coil the Krasis. If I don't, then they get to Frenzy. I mean, actually, they could get. They would just be able to do both, actually. Yeah, they could actually just do both of those. Uh, this is really annoying. Oh, I should have brought in. I should have brought in Cinder Vines instead of the treasure map to blow up Frenzy. No, I regret that. Yeah, Steamkin. Yeah. Steamkin's pretty great. Uh, yep, we're gonna die. I should have so if I would have played this this crisis as a 2 2 on turn four, you know, I didn't think it was really going to do too much, but you know, looking back at it, my opponent drew Steamkins and started playing Steamkins after that. And so I wish I would have played this as the 2 2 so that it would have gotten shocked because then I would have had the shock in the graveyard to be able to shock a Steamkin. But obviously, it, you know, at my turn four and them not ha having played a Steamkin yet. That wasn't, um, that wasn't really in the picture. Well, I can kill some things, I suppose. Hey, Clockwork John. Resub day. Arcbow day. Quasi Duple Ooze day. So this will kill two things, but I mean, I have to get rid of the, oh wait, I'm, I'm still just dead. Yeah, because this would only kill, like we could kill Phoenix and then kill Steamkin and Phoenix, but we can only block like Daredevil or, you know, we don't block one of these. Uh, this does non-pirate da damage, of course, and the, the Daredevils are pirates. So, you know, hindsight, uh, at the time, I didn't really want to play the 2-2 crisis and just let it get shocked, but then afterwards, after seeing Steamkin Steamkin, you know, after, you know, not, not doing that, then I wish I did let them shock it there. Oh, well. Didn't work out for us. Hey, what's up, Cajun guy? Magic's hard. Dr. Dance, hello. Happy sub anniversary there. Thanks, Cajun guy. That's actually sub number five. I guess I was a little behind. There. <laughs> okay. So, knocked the rust off. First match of the day. Yuck. This is kind of the problem with having six and seven mana cards in your deck, is that sometimes you just have them in your opening hand um, after you mulligan and you are forever away from playing them. All right, so we need this land, and now we need... Three, 
Three more lands. Best of three. I, I always play best of three. That's not land. Um, re reprint predictions for Core 2020? Basically none. I mean, there, there will inevitably, inevitably be something reprinted, but there's not very many cards that actually get reprinted, especially not not uh, rares and mythics that are, um, you know, big time in the, in the format. Like, like Corset 2019, what, what was like a, a big time rare or mythic that was reprinted? Like there was like Gilded Lotus and Omniscience. But like the reprints are usually, it's rude. Reprints are usually um, yeah, things like Spell Pierce, Shock, Lightning Strike, stuff like that. So I mean, but, like those aren't those aren't too uh, special. I guess so. Format staples that would otherwise not be legal standard anymore. Do you mean the like ones that are already in the format that you think that they will put back in the format? Because the only yeah, like those those are basically the only the only things that are possible, like the only things there are like what, like strike. I mean like, like basically just those cards, strike, shock, um Lanor Elf, Opt. Like those kind of thing. Like there's, you know, like four or five of them. I don't no, so I'm not really gonna make a I mean I can see I could see all of them being reprinted and and I could see none of them being reprinted. I don't know. I'm not not the best at like the prediction stuff, I guess. Um, but yeah, so so yeah, shock, lightning strike, Lanor Elf. Um, I think that whenever they put them into, whenever they were put into standard, it was kind of controversial to have. Uh, Especially, especially Lanor Elf more than any of the others. Uh, controversial to have a, a one mana mana creature back in standard. We didn't think that we'd be seeing that again. But I think that overall they were very successful and the people have liked it. And I think that it's made standard better to have good cheap spells. And so... Therefore, I could see all of them being reprinted. Um, I, I think they have been a su success. However, I could see them not re like Lanor Elf. I could see not reprinting Lanor Elf with all with like the other two mana mana creatures in standard right now, and 
um, you know, moving away from Lanorl for, you know, a year or two before it gets printed again, uh, just, just to try to change up the format some. If I had to just, you know, just guess, I would probably say, I'd probably say that it's, I'd give Lanwar Elf a less than 50% chance of being reprinted. I think it's more likely that it does not, I think it's more likely that it's not in core 2020 than what, than it is in core 2020, but it's close. I'd say it's close to 50%. Well, that Star Extinction really saved us that game. Now, Dominaria had yeah, Dominaria had Lightning Bolt. I don't think they're going to reprint Lightning Bolt. Some people call it Wizard's Lightning, but it's Lightning Bolt. I don't think that's going to be reprinted. It's going to be Elvish Mystic, yeah. Get rid of land. No land or elf. Now elvish mystic. Um. Yeah. So far with the M twenty cards, we've we've seen three cards. We've seen the there's three Chandras in the set. There's an uncommon, a rare, and a mythic Chandra. In Core 2020, that's what we've seen so far. We're gonna just trim some shocks and lightning strikes with their creature. A lot of their creatures being for toughness, um, and put in a second star of extinction, also. But that's a star of extinction. Of course, is a card that gets spell pierced quite easily. Yeah, I would say Bird of Paradise probably has no chance. When was the last time Bird of Paradise was in standard? Was it M10 or is it 10th edition? No, no, it's it's since then, right? I think it was in like M11, M12. It was in one of those. I think M12, maybe M13 even. No, I think I think M12. Yeah, I miss I miss Garuk also. I could use a new Garuk. I will craft your demise. Well, of course, my plan was to play Phoenix, but then plans changed. Yeah, I think I think so. I think that M that M twelve ones I draw. I think that was the last version in standard. He missed curse 
cursed scroll. All right, so they have lava coil. All right, I should have all three star extinctions in. Yeah, we just did. All right, we'll be on the play here, though. Let's get another star and maybe a couple of cannonades instead of shocks or strikes. Maybe war bosses. I should just go with all lightning strikes and no shocks. Because I do like how lightning strike can pair with chain whirler to take down a four toughness creature. Speaking of that pair. Doctor of Time. It's a pretty cool name. Isn't that like that Marvel character? Isn't he a Doctor of Time? Uh, Doctor Strange? Oh, it's Doctor Who. Prepare to marvel at my masterpieces. Ha! Enough. What was the first rare I opened? For me, it was, for me it was Dungrove Elder. It never found a home, but I kept it for all those years, and now it's an all-star in my Grothama EDH deck. Nice. First rare I ever opened. I honestly... See, I, I don't have a very good long-term memory, to be honest. And I... And I I honestly can't remember. So I'm I'm trying to think of like the first rare that I remember opening. I'm honestly not so sure about that either. Oh, I'll craft something special for you. No, oh, that was close. We live to fight another hmm. day. I think the first like booster boxes it's like the first booster boxes I get got were whenever I was a kid, um, and they were like Nemesis and Odyssey, and those sets like right around there. Uh, 
Um, yeah, what else was right there? I remember Nemesis, Odyssey, Torment. I didn't know too much about Magic at the, that time, you know, like I didn't... I wasn't like a competitive player or anything, of course. I was a, I was a kid. I think I maybe went to like, or I, I did go to like one or two F and M's. I remember that was kind of a big deal. But then I, I stopped playing. Basically, I, I played for like a summer, basically. Um, but you know, like real casual, of course. And I didn't play again until like World Wake. Uh, you know, so like after, you know, like I didn't play at all in high school or college, and it wasn't until like after college. Um, I'm gonna keep the coil. That I had, I had some friends after college that were like, "Hey, we're gonna go over to, uh, you know, this person's house and play some Magic: The Gathering." You ever heard of that game? I was like, "Oh yeah, I used to play that when I was younger," and they kind of got me into it, and I really liked it. And I went home and, um, you know, looked up more about it, and I found like Magic Online and started playing a lot of Magic Online, and that's how I started started playing. Especially because my my main Friend group like that lived, at the time, they lived around 45 minutes away from me. So, like, during the week, I didn't really see them. So, I could just play Magic Online during the week. When you buy a paper box, there are 36 booster packs with each pack having a rare, you know, like uh, a rare, three uncommons, 12, or it's 11, 11 commons, 15 total cards. Yeah, I'll take a land. And so that's why I took a land. It turned on. It turns on the Arch of Orozca that can, and allows me, you know, gives me the uh, the city's blessing before I start sacking these artifacts. Y'all have some cool stories as well there. Crisis. Three, six, seven, eight. It's a crisis for six. I guess I am going to have to move discard. That's a little annoying. So I could use the two treasures to play the treasure map to not discard. Is that worth it? Otherwise I'm discarding uh, treasure map, I guess. Yeah, I'll play it. Hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I have a foil black lotus somewhere in my garage. In a, in a sleeveless deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I can starve extinction. And then if it gets counter, I can still coil. Would Star of Extinction be too strong if it was uncounterable? Yeah, probably not. It would see a whole lot more play. I don't think it would be, like, too strong, though. It does kind of feel like it should be uncounterable, right? It's this huge star that, like, like this big-time meteor that makes, like, everything go extinct. I don't know, it's pretty big. So they haven't seen a ton of drakes. There's only one drake in the graveyard. Two more over here. So yeah, they still have a lot of drakes to go. They're down to 19 cards. It's possible we can mill them out. I don't I don't know if that's really that possible. Upstairs. Found the Bane Fire. Bane Fire is sweet. Yeah, I could have. I guess I could have lightning struck my own Phoenix. I was. I basically. So the reason why I didn't do that because what I, my plan for the lightning strike was. Uh, to pair that with like activate you know play the hellkite activate hellkite and do like one damage to a a, a phoenix or a uh, a drake and and then also lightning shark to finish it off or how you know our opponent was at nine you know like if we find a little bit more burn you know we could finish him off like that like um Especially how much mana I was getting, like, end step, like, uh, the lightning strike plus a shock, something like that. Put him down to, like, four, and then play the Hellkite and activate it a couple of times. So I was just kind of leaving my options open. I, I could have saved, saved the Phoenix for a little bit, I suppose, but I liked where we're, we were at. Stupid Paradise Druid. Not being able to be shocked. I guess we get to Chain Whirler it though, so that's not so bad. Hmm. Hmm. I 
know I noted this somewhere. That Tamio is going to be difficult to deal with, to say to say the least. I'm not going to upkeep Scry here, because I may want to play Phoenix. You know, if we draw a land, so I don't I don't want to get rid of the the access to the mana. So they could have minus to grab the Wild Growth Walker back. Or have like another Wild Growth Walker here play at plus Jade Light. So keep kept Lightning Strike up. I think my best chance of winning this game, which is not much, but I think my best chance is they command the Dread Horde to a low enough life total that we can triple burn spell them to death. I don't think Immortal Sun is just GG because Wild Growth Walker really tough to beat to the library so i really want to find Star of Extinction as well. I think you will find my notes helpful. We got two Wild Growth Walkers, all four Jade Lights. Everyone is expendable, except me. So it's really how big does our opponent want to go? That looks pretty big. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Thirteen puts them down to seven. It's not a good number to be at. And we win.
Thought that was our best chance of winning, so I just sat back on that. <laughs> uh... I guess that's a that's a little bit of a tilt there for the opponent. <laughs> Command the dead horde. <laughs> Wasn't too happy about that one. I guess. <laughs> Upon further reflection, I may have made an error. The opponent probably. You went to get some water, you missed all of that. So our opponent was at 20. They command the Dread Horded to get three Jade Lights and two Wild Growth Walkers. So they lost 13 life, put them down to seven. And before the Explore triggers and they gain all their life back, I had seven points of burn. I had a Lightning Strike and two Shocks. So just finished them off. And then they conceded the match. That was game one. Uh, Lana, we're off on the play. Nobody's ever beaten that still. It's, it's kind of amazing. That's happened in like millions of matches in standard. Turn one, Lana, we're off on the play, and nobody has ever beaten it still. Nobody's ever gone turn one, Lana, we're off on the play and lost, ever. Please no Nissa. Please no Nissa. All right, not Nissa. That's good. <laughs> yep, that's for real. Nobody's ever lost. Turn one land off. It's unbeatable. Unfortunately, I did not have another Chain Whirler to, f to follow that up. That would have been great. Hopefully no crisis or anything like that from them. Alright, so they're playing the Bant Ramp deck. So I want all these Cannonades. Um, I want these Star of Extinctions. Definitely want the Cinder, the Cinder Vines, because they got a good amount of enchantment removal over there. And I kind of want another Immortal Sun. No, we'll just keep the two. Daredevil is out. basically just have like the white finale what else is out I like everything else here I'm gonna need treasure maps if I'm keeping if I'm bringing in more star of extinctions um, Don't see anything that's like automatically out. Demanding dragons in our sideboard for red aggro. Hmm. All right, I guess I'm going to Cannonade. No, oh, Cannonade's great. Um, guess I'm cutting one shock, one strike. 
Um, one map and one crisis. I don't think I've ever really caught a crisis before. I think the coil is important, and honestly, maybe I should be playing another coil over a strike. The reason why I like strike is because it can go towards Nyssa. But I think coil is important because it, this deck plays Tristani and Shalai. And so I think that having coil is important because of those two cards. Do they just like board out? Like, do they just have like a bunch of Druid of the Cowls in the board? Do they just board out Paradise Druid and bring in Druid of the Cowl? Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Because that's actually, that's. I mean, if you can afford the sideboard slots, that's pretty cool. Looking for some gas. <laughs> Thanks in Christ, that's a good command. There you go. That's a commonly asked question there. Of what's going to rotate out. and So you can just do exclamation point rotate now if you are in chat and you see somebody asking that question. For that nice resource to help them out. That's unfortunate. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Use one treasure to get that crisis up to six. So it turns out if you kill mana creatures, you can have some success against these ramp decks. Just gotta kill all the mana creatures. And that's what our deck does. It, it does a good job of killing mana creatures. A bunch of burn spells, chain whirlers, fiery cannonades in, in the sideboard. We do a pretty good job of killing mana creatures. Hey, I fight whales with my fists. <laughs> good evening. Hope you're having a nice Wednesday. Uh, we actually just played Four Color Dread Horde the previous match. Uh, we only got to play one game because our opponent scooped it up. They played a Dread. They played a command the Dread Horde that put them down to seven, and I had seven points of burn in my hand, and so I just so I killed them on the spot. And then they concede. That was game one, and then they just concede the match. No, low Q, I did not. So it wasn't wasn't a very big sample of how we do against four color command, the dread horde. So I wouldn't um, wouldn't glean too much from that. I think Esper is going to be kind of tough for us. Like, really don't want to ferry here. Yay, no to ferry. 
card's too good to pass. I wanted to, you know, I want to find Shock or Strike or Coil, you know, something like that, but that's that's too good to pass. This is the matchup for Immortal Sun. I thought the stream decker was... Is it not updated? I'm pretty... It's on... The, yeah, the deck's right here. It should be the deck on the on the side too if you have that up. It should be the deck on the side. Oh yeah, the deck list was from last week. This is the exact same list that we played last week. Where we went four one and ranked. With our own, our loss last week was only because of uh this kills the token. Need to... I want to kill this hero precinct one. Hmm. Unfortunate. Well, better to have that chain weather. Yeah, and I didn't. I didn't edit it. It's the same same list. This isn't a fight you can win. Time is much more ah, Give me back that chain whirler now. That's how it was meant to happen. We're pretty dead. I guess I should have just kept the. I needed to just keep the chain whirler. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, gotta go to the next game. No. No removal for too long. Um, not going to change a lot here, though. I mean, I think Daredevil's good in this matchup. It just didn't do anything that game. Treasure map is kind of a problem here, honestly, with how how they bounce it with Little Teferi. It's a, it honestly is kind of a problem. But without Treasure map, it's hard to get to, like, all this mana. So we're in a little bit of a conundrum there. Um, we should play Cannonade, we should play War Boss. Hey, Destin Sword. Thanks for the sub there. I do like I do like having an extra or like just having land in the sideboard. I think that being able to um, change up your land count depending on how your strategy goes is a is a nice option to have. So I've I've always been kind of a fan of having land in the sideboard um, in general. Hey, Ali. Hope your Wednesday is going good over there in Germany. And yeah, thanks, Destin Sword, for that sub and the nice words there. <clears throat> I really need to keep the Chain Whirler that last game. That, that was the decision that really hurt that last game. 
If that land was a blue land, I would have been keeping it. If we scryed in, it was a blue land. Oh uh, yeah, Dave. David, how's it going? Oh, you're a doctor of time. That that hurts. Ditching that card there. All right. Well, should have kept. Should have kept that land earlier. Getting punished for not keeping that land. Don't worry, I got this. It's only a matter of time. Oh, that works. I was hoping to draw land to be able to Daredevil Thought Erasure here. But Oiler works. Hey Toxic Flames. Cool, yeah, David. Hope everything's going good. Toxic Flames, welcome back. Thanks for that resub. 16 months is so many months. Thank you so much for that. For all that support. We're working towards a year and a half now. So I don't know if we can beat this as Kanta or not. We'll have to see. I just have so much life. No, I'm still in uh, Virginia. I still live in Virginia right now. I would like to move back to DFW at some point. I know. No time for a break. You just let so this is Crisis for three. I only draw one card. Or I just hold it and try to No, I, I just play it. Yeah, it is Toxic Flames. Yep. Yeah, this is my full-time job. Just streaming and everything. Trying to kill Esper is so difficult. They gain so much life. Between these Othakayas and Basilica Bell Haunts and everything. Some unfortunate things happen in this game. 
really need this Immortal Sun back. <laughs> yeah, we only had three lands at the time that I ditched this. But could really use that card back. We should have three of them in the deck right now, though, so maybe we draw another. If you show remorse, I'll show restraint. But I think that's our, our main way of winning is drawing that card. I'm known for my excellent timing. I'll protect you. I'll take Star of Extinction as well. Thank you. Well, just gotta hope they don't have a counterspell. All right, as Kanta's gone, the fairies are gone. They still have a lot of cards in hand, though. But as Kanta's gone, that's big. Yeah, our deck philosophy. Yeah, we're just a we're a, a, a red mid range deck. Stop with these Teferis. Is that the fourth? We need to move quick. I won't hide yeah, it's the fourth the one. Gross. So yeah, we're just a basically a big red deck that um yeah you know, it's trying to go bigger than the aggro decks has like has a lot of red removal spells which are just well positioned in general all right another star of extinction just the trick for this Thank you. I think blue white. Being to sparks gonna be kinda hard. We need to draw crasises now. Now what? Overwhelming. So yeah, now we need crasis. I don't think I brought in Banefire, unfortunately. Perfect. And they did that move into combat also, not even waiting. Oh no, a second to spark? No. They have six cards chilling over here. <clears throat> wrath, Wrath, Oath of Kaya, Cast Down, Binding. So definitely Binding. Because Binding gets rid of the my last Immortal Son if I find that. Treasure map can help dig. <laughs> Fifth Teferi incoming. Well, that's a... It's basically a Fifth Teferi. I require 
servants, your corpse will volunteer. I am out of Star of Extinctions. <laughs> Rise. <laughs> I do need to find a mortal son. And I only have one left because I have one at the bottom. But I'm taking the treasure map as my draw step now because that, that will help me dig farther. Um, I do have one direfully Daredevil left. That will give me a Dispark. That would be nice. All right, this time, sorry, treasure map. Uh, this thing's good. Wait, cast down? I guess it's not that good because of cast down. Alright, I'll just take this thing, draw some cards. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Do this for six. So that's two, yeah, six. I could use two treasures and make it eight, draw four if I, so basically should I use two treasures to draw one card that I get to use now um, and not have to wait on that. Because there's really only like two cards that I can possibly find here, either Dire Fleet, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do that because this thing's about to ultimate like after the next turn. And there's really only two cards I can find is like the the Immortal Sun or Direfully Daredevil, so I need to dig fast. Looks like our opponent's going to Kai's Rats so we get to draw multiple cards. I'll find a use for me. I've learned much from your death. <laughs> Rise and shine. All right, good. No, no. We dodged Thought Erasure. That's good. Alright, no counter spell. Alright, just in case. I'm gonna do do one damage to Liliana just in case the Immortal Sun leaves, you know, like need to lower Liliana's loyalty by one. Alright, no immediate to spark. We have gotten rid of two to sparks and one binding. That's a lot of those kind of things. Rockborn, thanks for that reset. Thanks, Rockborn. That's a lot of lands. So that's how it is.
How many lands are in our deck? 25, that's what I thought. So this is uh, two, four, six. Well, I messed up my count. So that's five, seven, 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, so there's seven lands left in the deck. Um, seven, six, five, four. So four lands besides those way down there. I thought one of these treasure coves were was being tapped, but I didn't realize both of them were. Gross. All right, that's that's honestly not bad for me. That's keeping me from drawing two cards a turn now, so now I, I won't mill out before um, before they do, so that's actually kind of good for me. Back off. You cannot see your folly. Gonna have the the one thread at a at a time approach here. Because of Wrath Effects. All right, so if that card in hand is a blank, does Hellkai do more damage activating? One, two, three, we get three activations. It actually does. Yeah, as a haste attacker, it's only doing f five. Here, I can activate it three times. I can do six. All right. Why not haste into lightning strike? Because activating into lightning strike is is one more point of damage than than haste, and it's guaranteed. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to connect with it because you just you're going to get that damage guaranteed. Alright, so I guess I should have another Star of Extinction and the Bane Fire in here. Well, 
Less shock. Oh, dang it. Ah, uh, I meant to bring in a Cinder Vines. Because the Ixalan's binding. Whoops. That's all right. Um, question is, would I recommend this deck for best of one? And I don't know. Probably not. I, I don't know. I guess I don't know best of one super well. But just from a... Second shock, that doesn't really matter. Just from a, a just a theoretical standpoint, playing mid range and best of one is pretty tough. So our opponent does not know about the lightning strike. That's good. Alright, Lyra's out of there. That's good news. Alright, well, <laughs> I was never casting that Star of Extinction anyway. Just one card left. I hope it's not a wrath. I shall miss your company. If our opponent didn't block with the Lyra, then we would have been playing the Phoenix post combat. We're close. So close. Our incredible game two top decks. Got us there. That game too, we were like really dead twice and like, you know, drew the Star of Extinctions. <clears throat> right on time. That was an incredible match there. Alright, so another 4 1 here for Mono Red Crisis and Ranked again in Diamond here. Uh, it's getting me to almost to Mythic. This deck's just pretty solid. Yeah, opponent's flood game was real strong. They they did have a really strong flood game there. Um, but uh, there we go. Yeah, like not too much to to say about the deck. It's just I don't know. It's just pretty solid. Like um, Star of Extinction has been awesome. Immortal Sun has been great as well. Crisis is like basically this mono red deck. This mid range deck is is just pretty solid. But it didn't have like that top end card that gave it a, a good amount of like card advantage and a and a big threat that was a clock and crisis just fits this perfectly and we've never really struggled with casting it too much um 
but yeah, like these these are good. Like can you know if you think about control decks or mid range decks, either one, you know how like you always play like early removal spells. <clears throat> well, these are like the best early removal spells to be playing, shocks and lightning strikes, because they're so versatile. You know, instead of having like cast down or tyrant scorn, you know, if you think about like with the Esper deck, they can only do its thing of like kill the creature. These can like kill an early creature or um hit or hit planeswalkers. Or as we saw like with the Command the Dreadhorde game, or these can just finish off opponents. <clears throat> you know, like we had like the lightning strikes to finish off opponents so often. Cards are really quality. Chain Whirler is amazing. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of Planeswalkers with one loyalty running around also. So there we go. Mono Red Krasis. Um, very cool deck. If you want something different to be playing um, and you know you want like a, a good competitive deck that's something a little different, give this a try. That's a good one. Uh, if you don't have Daredevil and you need to replace Daredevil, probably, like, you'd probably play a, a card up the curve. Like, maybe maybe more Hellkites. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe, like, another, another Hellkite and have, like, the fourth Lava Coil in the main. And then, you know, like, maybe play another Cinder Vines in the board or something like that. Um, and, uh, hmm. I don't know. Daredevil has been really, really solid for us, but yeah, you, it's basically, Daredevil is basically a four, you know, like a four or five mana card for the most part. You're not really playing it early too much. You could have, I guess you could go dismiss a Pyromancer that this thing can kill kill a creature or just like help you loot and find other things. You could go dismiss a pyromancer. That could be a replacement as well. Anyway, there we go. Um, this deck reminds you of mono red Jun decks from the 2018 standard. Yeah, yeah, like those those decks with uh, with chain whirler there too. Yeah, just pretty solid. I, uh, <clears throat> yeah, the problem was yeah you could go small Sarkin, you know of course the problem with that is is a mortal sun, and I I have been really happy with the mortal sun, but if you if you don't have daredevils and you don't have immortal suns then going like Sarkin and Chandra, um, is like another good option there. Yeah, fight with fire could be yeah, fight with fire could be a replacement for a daredevil honestly cuz that that's something in the late game you could kick and everything. Fight with fire is a strong card. I like that that card. Um I don't think I like crater maker as much. Um there's also like the the two mana creature that says like scry one whenever you play stuff, burning prophet. That's that's another option. So like whenever you cast any of these non-creature spells, you get to scry one and that helps you go through your deck pretty quickly and it's like a one three blocks pretty well early in the game and it's still like a can be an aggressive card that's so that's another good cheap option if you need need a budget option there yeah no light at the stage just because of like how high the curve is and everything and um but light at the stage is a good card but our curve's pretty high and we're not really turning on uh the other part super often but siege gang's okay i've been not so happy with siege gang commander with playing it i think i'd rather just have another hellkite over a siege gang i think but anyway there we go uh we'll go ahead and move on to ban arpo now great league there for mono red crisis so if you're watching this video later on youtube um thank you so much for watching Hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, but there we go. Thanks again for watching Modern Crisis, and I will see you for another video.